Hello, my name is Dr. Anna Maria Mihaicha. I am the president of AM Medical LLC and the author of the book, Light Medicine, A New Paradigm, The Science of Light, Spirit, and Longevity. And today I am so excited to uh, have invited Dr. Karen Johnson for an absolutely fascinating conversation. How does light create matter? And how can we utilize light to heal the body? How is it possible to create uh, healing um, applications, for example, out of Manuka honey and relieve pain? Some of those amazing questions we're gonna answer today. First, I wanna tell you a little bit about Dr. Johnson. Uh, he has a PhD in biochemistry a master's of science in molecular biology, a bachelor's of science in biochemistry and biological sciences. He has spent a decade in the university system and 18 years working for the New Zealand government. He has over a hundred journal articles that he has uh, written and six patents and has contributed to two books. And I am so excited to welcome you today. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, uh, what is your background in science and in quantum biology and what has brought you to create some of the extraordinary technologies that you're working with? Okay, so I guess I could start really back to when I was a, a child and um, an ability to, I guess, explore a natural environment in New Zealand. The, I guess, scientific aspect of my childhood would have been um, really driven by my, my mother and father. Um, but I can explore a little bit of that later but my I guess research career and my university studies um, really about biological sciences and understanding them from quite a different perspective so I've got a PhD in biochemistry from Victoria University in Wellington here in New Zealand I've got a master's in molecular genetics and a BSc double major plant and microbial sciences and biochemistry. I, I took a year off after my master's and I taught hip hop dancing. I uh, also got involved in doing VJing at dance parties using, I guess, some strange approaches to creating visuals for dance parties. So I've got a very creative side to myself and I've always been quite exploratory, trying to push boundaries, trying to understand things, you know, trying to figure out how science works uh, or how biology works. So, you know, traditional, I guess, scientific background, being taught in a university setting. Um, I finished my PhD, which was looking at serine proteases from the pancreas of sheep and comparing them with pigs, and um, went to a government organization in New Zealand called Industrial Research Limited. So I was, I guess, uh, looking at helping New Zealand companies uh, develop technologies using a biological understanding. And really, uh, the first six months of that kind of research work that I was doing was isolating five different RNAs, enzymes from different organisms, and putting them together for the NIH and the RNA Society and a kit for sequencing RNA, mm -hmm. which is well before the current technologies now being utilized like iron torrent, right? So yeah. this is this is old school biochemistry using RNAs enzymes, P32 labeling techniques, 
and and running gels and looking at bands on gels in order to create a kit that could have international distribution and, and use by people wanting to sequence RNA. So that, that was, sorry, uh, that was kind of my first endeavor into that kind of scientific research community. And uh, I guess I, once I finished that contract, I got a permanent job at industrial research that then led me to start doing research in the area of wound healing and regenerative medicine. Uh, so I was looking at extracellular matrix scaffolds, which are the parts that surround cells. And I was taking the proteases that I was using as part of my PhD and chopping up those proteins into small peptides and then looking at those peptides for biological activity relevant to wound healing. So stimulation of blood vessel formation and accelerating cell migration, down regulation of uh, inflammation. And, and so, you know, you go on a journey when you start a new project and you start from the point of ignorance. And from that, you endeavor to try to figure out really what's going on um, in order to create a hypothesis as to how the cells respond within that environment of the extracellular matrix and what makes them kind of differentiate or change into different shapes and forms in order to understand their biological role and their properties in that wound healing complex process. Yeah. And so, so how, how then has your approach changed or has been augmented? Because you've had some very interesting experiences and you write about your experience in 2003 and how that completely changed oh, things. 2013. In 2013, <laughs> sorry. That, yeah. that how that actually affected you and how you were able to uh, see uh, subatomic structures uh, and recognize the Holy Spirit in them. And the reason why I'm asking you this is, you know, uh, I'm, I'm interested in light medicine, the marrying of science and spirit, and the yeah. future of science is a conglomerate that takes into account the observer, and which to me is the, the, the spiritual being. And I want to kind of uh, uh, learn a little bit more about how has that affected you? And what did you learn? And how did you travel in time? Yeah, okay. So I'll go there. I'll go there. Um, I think the journey I need to talk about also goes back to childhood, right? So um, I guess my early years were happy, but later teenage years weren't. So there was a traumatic event in my life. Um, and that was around my mother's death when I was 11. So a suicide. And that triggered some health problems within my body. I ended up getting cerebral arthritis in my hips and knees. So I couldn't walk for six months um, due to the trauma of that loss um, and, and not knowing why. Right. So the, the journey from that point was, well, how do I restore my health, uh, get back up on my feet rather than lying on the sofa watching soap operas, Days of Our Lives in Santa Barbara as an 11 year old. So I guess the science journey that I went on gave me um, a way forward of trying to understand biology. So when I was, we can jump over several things, but uh, when I was 41 and my daughter was 11, the same age as I was when my mother died, the experience that I had um, going to church and uh, receiving communion. So I, I was walking, um, 
quite fast to church that day. I was energized. And I, the reason for that higher energy in my body, I'll talk about a little bit later. But as I was going up to receive communion, I, I got transfixed by Christ on the cross. So there's a, an image of Jesus as a kind of paper mache figure at this church. Um, and my body, my mirror neurons put me into that kind of form, that structure. So I connected to Christ on the cross. And at that point in time, what happened was internally within the vision, I saw a, a, a golden sphere of light. It was about two meters in size in front of me. Uh, two other small orbs of light on either side in a state of symmetry. So that only lasted a very brief moment. Vision came back to normal. My breathing had all kind of completely changed. When that normal vision returned, I got image after image after image of future events in my life. So I saw essentially down a rabbit hole into, you know, I, I was trying to figure out at the time what happened and I, I couldn't because it was like having the faucets turned on, both hot and cold, everything all at once and just at flowing without any ability to stop it. So all this information just came rushing through and that was the point of really handing over the pain that I was carrying in my body. Um, so that experience at childhood when I was 11, that trauma, yeah, I got to, I got to kind of hand that back um, and restore myself in that moment. So I was no longer, in a sense, broken and both mind, heart, spirit, soul, all connected back together again. Yeah. So... It was a state of elevation, um, and the only way I can describe it scientifically is going into the physics of the subconscious mind. So the experience itself, I couldn't explain scientifically to my peers. So I came across as completely crazy. Ah, me too. I totally understand. Ah. Yeah. And, and look, look. Fair enough, the current scientific model does not provide the background or framework for how the human mind works. Absolutely right? true. So I ended up having to walk through the New Zealand scientific system, walk through the mental health system in New Zealand, trying to explain to doctors, psychiatrists, what happened and be told that, yeah, it's bipolar, it was due to, you know, what happened to your mother back when you were 11, right? So for me, it was such a healing experience at church that I couldn't reconcile between what they were saying and what I experienced and what I felt. Yeah. So it was it was very, very challenging for lots of people around me because all of a sudden lots of information was freely available to me because of the experience that I had and seeing into the future, bringing all those images back with me and then being able to create a new model and, and change the current scientific model to fit with the experience that I had. That is absolutely fantastic. And so I am going to share my screen here and I'm gonna show a couple images that, uh, that are uh, from uh, your website. Um, and um, I just would like you to kind of talk a little bit about that, what that means in context to your experience. Yeah, sure. So, so the experience for me was like being at the center of my life. 
So I got to see future and I got to see past all at once. So if you consider the zero, 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 or the center of the cross, and the top right quadrant is uh, like childhood, the first 20 years, and then the, the bottom right is uh, like summer or you know, another part of the life, your life. And you kind of travel back through to that zero point when your life gets to the midpoint. So my midpoint corresponded to that moment at church, the moment where I got to see everything forward and everything backwards. So I had to create a model that was based on symmetry, but inverted symmetry. So, uh, you know, I took Einstein's equation, E equals MC squared, rearrange it to make it c squared equals e divided by m so this is the model of how to rearrange einstein and create it in a form of light so putting a light first so light's the fastest thing in the universe so light comes first so rearranging the model to c squared equals e divided by m and then realizing that e divided by m is rise over run so straight line mathematics, y equals mx plus c, where m is rise over run. So what I did is if c is zero, uh, then before the beginning of time, you can perceive that light is an interaction of the electromagnetic fields on a geometry of a cross. So, I returned the geometry of the right hand rule of electromagnetism into Einstein's equation C squared equals E divided by M, looking at that geometry where C in that Z dimension is, is photons of light originating out of that zero field at the center point, the inverted symmetry. So I spent a lot of time, um, I guess, looking at the geometry of light, the fact that light has no mass and no charge. And I guess, why, why did I experience what I did at that point at church, right? Back in uh, 2013, at that moment, why then? And I looked at a lot of kind of information to kind of go, well, 41, why, why then? So there's some really fascinating things. Um, when, you, when you peel back all the layers and you go, well, at the moment that I had that experience, I was thinking about quark mathematics. And the current standard model being the addition of fractions to give charges in a proton and a neutron. And I was going, well, I don't see symmetry within the model that we currently have as a standard model of physics because neutrons are zero charge and that doesn't make any sense to me at all. So what I, what I was doing was exploring different mathematical uh, permutations of those quark calculations, right? So I went back to um, the idea that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if it's up, it's actually negative one. And if it's down, it's positive one. So there's the balance of opposites. And in doing that, I then looked at multiplication of one negative one times one times negative one to get plus one for the proton. And then I did the reverse for the neutron where I did positive one times negative one times positive one to give me negative one. So my neutron and my supersymmetry inversion model has a negative one charge rather than a zero charge. And I did something. So, so how does that relate to, you are describing helium and 
the hydrogen atom, and you're talking about helium as the masculine representation of the Holy Spirit. And oh, the, the masculine about, representation of God. Uh, the, uh, and I also want to know about the female representation. Where is she? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> See, um, I, I think the male re representation of God, of he, the father, actually just comes from he, helium, the Bose-Einstein condensate. So it's not male at all. It is the balance of symmetry that comes from changing quark maths. So that mathematics of protons being plus one, the mathematics of neutrons being negative one, how I reintroduced the zero back into the neutron was to as, add positrons back into the model. So there's an electron, a negative one, and a positron of plus one. By adding positrons back there, I still get a zero neutron. And neutrons, if you look at the mass, they're actually larger than protons. And that's due to the fact that there is actually a positron there. And that's why the overall charge is zero. So what you're saying is you were you are really looking at matter and antimatter. Positron is antimatter. Yeah, I'm saying that antimatter is actually present. Absolutely. It hasn't, it hasn't been lost at all. No. The act of measurement has created asymmetry and created the geometry of illusion, which is a, asymmetric in its nature, whereas we are symmetry-based reaction having an equal and opposite reaction Absolutely. so by restoring that inverted symmetry within the model and adding positrons back i went back to the drawing board in relation to helium right helium yeah. is a both einstein condensate all the electrons having the same energy level so no contrast and because i put positrons back into the model I've added two additional electrons to helium to make them 16. So my quarks are electrons and my positron and electron are all electrons and a Bose-Einstein condensate is only one energy level at that ground state. All right, Karen, so for somebody who is, is not a mathematical whiz, yeah. What you just said, can you explain that in simple words? Of, so you created a new model of the atomic structure that, that has matter and antimatter in it. It's a new mathematics. And in, in essence, you're describing a new unified field theory that is based on the symmetry of the universe. And if for, for your, in your view, is a model of spirit and creation manifested from light into form. Is that right? Yes. So the idea in science at the moment that everything originated out of nothing um, didn't sit well with me. Me neither. <laughs> so I went and said, my null hypothesis is the absence of God. And I'm disproving the absence of God. So you're proving the presence of God. Indeed. Very nice. I like it. Now, so I went to the point of we can only see contrast. And so in a Bose-Einstein condensate of helium, there is no contrast. So there is no beginning or no end and, and no way of actually observing this uh unless you make a measurement uh and by making a measurement you create an asymmetric state which is no longer a bose-einstein condensate so, so when when i read your on your website though you still refer to a big bang and to me you know i'm coming from the perspective of ecophysics and and there was no big bang so no, there, there is no big bang but you've got to relate back to what people currently think in order to provide some kind of bridge between the old thinking and the new thinking. 
So I, I think it's more of a supersymmetry inversion event where alpha particles were emitted from a Bose-Einstein condensate of helium. Okay. Nobody understands what you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. So the mathematics of that is what's really interesting. Okay, because I changed the quark maths. Yeah. Yeah, and now I have 16 electrons yeah. in the helium. 12 go out as the alpha particle, okay. the 12 disciples, four go in, and now we have a ratio of three and one, yeah? So alpha particles emitted is actually able to derive the speed of light. Yeah. Okay, so the calculation is based, in, based on known binding kinetics, the binding energy of electrons that are at a distance of 0. 0.00004 nanometers apart within the Bose-Einstein condensate of helium. So I was able to take that information, which is currently known in the scientific literature, and derive 10 times the speed of light. So providing the concept of inflation based on alpha particle emission. So you were describing the mathematics of the light of subatomic structures and how they are creating form. And because you are a quantum biologist, you then applied it later to biological systems and develop forms or methodologies of healing on a cellular level. And some of your videos show that. So um, can I show that for, for a moment? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so stand by here. So we are um, looking right now. Can you explain what we are looking at right now? Okay, so understanding how Manuka Honey was working was one of the things that I was trying to do when I was at Callahan Innovation. Um, because the honey uh, works uh, using light and the light of the system called photofenting chemistry, what we're seeing uh, is really what photofenting chemistry does and it breaks biological materials back into small molecules it's part of the natural apoptosis process happening in cells or death and regeneration the structures produced are essentially quantumly entangled so when you expose them to uva light what happens is that they capture that energy and they transform the structure of the fluid at the speed of light. So what we've got here are the components within Manuka honey and how it interacts to produce high energy short lived radicals called the hydroxy radical. And then the role of that hydroxy radical in generating these quantum fluids that are light responsive. So they, they're really bizarre because what they do is facilitate regenerative healing in the body by supporting that process of cell death and regeneration. And because it's a light sensitive system where photons provide a way of putting energy into the body topically through the skin. It supports the death regeneration system. It provides really the physics that's happening within the subconscious mind. So that adaptability toward light and the conformational changes that are occurring correspond to the physics that's actually happening in the subconscious mind uh, through a monoatomic mineral system that's present within Manuka honey. So it's supporting the 
the physics of the subconscious and how that operates. So it so, takes you into a different place within yourself. So Karen, uh, again, I'm going to just translate what you said. Thank you. <laughs> to do that. So what you have captured there was you uh, applied UV light to Manuka honey. And in Manuka honey, our molecular structure that are light sensitive, that are yeah. able to absorb that light and turn on either death or regeneration genetic material and programming and that can be utilized and what you're saying is that in the human being in our subconscious mind we have similar switches that are sensitive to light that yes. allow us to the or as an organism to die or to regenerate ourselves and basically continue living and rejuvenate ourselves so you are providing a scientific model of regeneration and longevity. Did I translate that well? Beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that system is actually based on single atoms coordinated to the aromatic rings of our neurotransmitters. So, so dopamine. About monoatomic atoms. Yeah. And that the monoatomic structures are affecting our neuro neurological brain wiring and helping. With well, they're actually creating the atoms at the speed of light within that system where if you think about the functional role of dopamine, mm -hmm. the amine, three hydrogens, NH3+, plus, the delivery of hydrogen into that monoatomic system is how light in the form of hydrogen in a symmetry state, quantum tunneling into the monoatomic is, is how memory is stored within the mind. So, so quantum tunneling is the, is the principle of time travel, really. So you're saying that, that the monoatomic structure of the atoms are um, in the brain creating memory is that in the form of physical structure so from light into physical form so is your thought light is that what you're saying well we see light and we know that the human retina are inverted the rods and cones are on the inside and hence the reason why we can see our dreams at night with our eyes closed so we're looking within the subconscious state of our mind and the so we're emanating from the subconscious and the rods in the retina are actually processing the light from the inside so what you're saying is the universe is a hologram that we are projecting from the inside out yes so the Barma line transitions, okay, so we're talking about hydrogen structure yeah. and the orbital layers. So our orbital Barma line is N equals two. Um, when the electron and positron jump up to N equals three or N equals four, from that Barma line corresponding to visible wavelengths of light. Yes. So the subconscious mind is light responsive based on electron transitions corresponding to Barma lines. So what I witnessed back in 2013 was getting down to see the nucleus and getting down to see layman lines N equals one. So I got to visually experience an alternative reality for a split second due to an alpha particle emission experience and the decay of that atom in my mind, releasing photons of light that I experienced as future events. Wow. I want to be downloaded like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too much for everybody around me, unfortunately. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Well, now I understand, right, what actually went on and I can have a scientific framework for it. It no longer seems so crazy. <laughs> well, can I, I want to uh, share the next video uh, and that is, uh, that is this one. What are yeah. we looking at here? Okay, so these are the proteins that I'm isolating out of Manuka honey. These are royal jelly proteins that have the phenolics, so the aromatic rings, and they have the monoatomic systems within those aromatic rings. So what we're seeing is how light interacts with monoatomics, creating diffractive patterns of energy. How did you photograph this? This is, this is an instrument called a nanosite. And it's looking down a microscope using a laser light and seeing the interaction of monoatomic systems at that nano, nano scale. So how do you measure something that's light sensitive okay. that changes at the speed of light? And the question that we face in quantum mechanics is that, you know, the observer effect, right? Yes. That's the biggest challenge. The, the fact that when you go and make a measurement, essentially you are defining the parameters of the observation. And yep. by doing so, you're creating the observation that you're looking for because the energy you're using to make that measurement is rearranging the geometry of form in order to create the outcome. Yes. So to overcome that paradox, I decided not to measure. To actually create a framework where logic can be used uh -huh. without measurement to avoid the issues uh, that we currently face in quantum mechanics. So, so I went back to the drawing board, started again. And so, so what you're saying is, you know, our observation collapses uh, a thought or light into matter. And therefore, as soon as you measure, the, the observation changes your measurement according to your expectation. So what you did was you created a system that does not observe in order to eliminate the problem of the observer effect. Yeah, I went back to using the geometry of light, zero mass, zero charge, and at Planck scale, at the epoch where there was no time. So my model that I've created is timeless, is chargeless and massless. Uh, in a sense, it provides that inner workings of the human subconscious allowing the interaction between the conscious and subconscious to be seen in order to understand the physical form of reality that science teaches us as the external physical world as the illusion because what we're observing from the inverted retina is a inner world of light that the subconscious mind is creating at the speed of light Absolutely. That is fantastic. Beautiful. And I totally agree with that. Now, you've developed some healing and regenerative technology that uses that light of the subconscious and your knowledge of that light and have applied it to uh, certain uh, products that, for example, can help in alleviating pain. How does that work? Well, we know that over 50 billion cells die every day as part of this apoptosis process in our bodies. Uh, we don't feel those 50, cell, 50 billion cells dying. The reason for that is uh, the hydroxy radical turns off pain. It's an oxidative switch. It's too fast for the conscious mind to actually feel or realize so because it's working uh, at a nanosecond scale, 
it's 1200 electron volts of energy released in a nanosecond. It's able to kind of bypass or circumvent the whole kind of pain system within our bodies. So uh, the spray that I make from Manuka honey containing the royal jelly protein, which performs this photofentin chemistry to produce hydroxy radicals. Yeah, it produces pain relief within seconds. So it's, it's quite remarkable and, and hence the reason why, you know, the structure of the O, the H and the, the star for me is really what the Holy Spirit is all about, the three in one. Yeah. So understanding, you know, the hydrogen and the role of hydrogen being the light or the sun. Yeah. Yeah. The oxygen or the O being that geometry of the helium bosine stone condensate before time, the sphere. So they're bringing those two together and then the, the high energy short lived radical molecule or the electron being the, the spirit molecule. So I looked at those aspects and then the concept that the Holy Spirit comes as gentle as the dewfall. So the idea of having a topical spray that uses light as a form of photoactivation, the reducing of the iron Fe3 plus to Fe2, which then allows the reaction to hydrogen peroxide to generate hydroxy radicals in the body. So it's supporting death and the breakdown of cells, old material that's damaged and giving the energy to the body to allow renewal to occur. And hence the reason why it switches pain off and restores health and well-being. I found that absolutely fascinating. I can't wait uh, to uh, order and, and finally get your product in my office too. I think it's just fantastic. And, and you know, the knowledge that you have uh, that uh, of how this works and to be able to uh, translate what you have seen uh, in your experience that really was a future download and to apply it here into scientific applicable knowledge is phenomenal. We're almost at the end of our time. I wanted to ask you, how can people find you? I will also put links at the end of the video, but tell us just a little bit uh, where people can learn more about your work. Yeah, look, I've got a website, obehave, O-H-B-E-E-H-A-V-E, uh, .co.nz. And I have a YouTube channel, uh, a few other social media platforms as well. But really, the science of supersymmetry inversion, that unified field theory that I've put together based on the experience that I had subconscious mind physics, uh, the connection between science, religion, the Holy Spirit, there's all, it's all available on my website. And yeah, I talk about my journey um, and how I'm kind of moving forward with the technologies that I'm bringing uh, yeah, forward to humanity to help, help people kind of restore and empower themselves through this healing technology. It's absolutely fantastic, and I'm so excited. I can't wait to collaborate with you, and I would like to have you back because there's definitely not enough time to... <laughs> there's a lot of information, knowledge. a lot of information on my website, so... It's uh... phenomenal, 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 and thank you so much for sharing, and uh, I think that you're a light to the world, and you're contributing to light medicine and bringing a new science uh, of light to humanity, which is the future. And I thank you so much for that. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you.